My name is Philip May. I am a professor of sociology and a professor of family and community medicine at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque. I have worked with fetal alcohol spectrum disorders research, particularly in epidemiology and maternal risk factors, since 1979. And I'm still at it. Uh, as Chief Dan George said in the, uh, in the movie Outlaw, uh, uh, Outlaw Josie Wales, uh, I shall endeavor to persevere in this area. My colleagues and I have researched the prevalence and characteristics of fetal alcohol spectrum disorders in a number of populations. As far as uh, developmental issues and uh, issues of mental deficiency, FAS is indeed the leading cause of mental deficiency in the, in the United States and Europe. We have uh, targeted um, the general populations of elementary schools, particularly first graders. Uh, we have done in-school studies in South Africa, where we did our first ones in 1997, and have done seven uh, studies since. Uh, the prevalence that we find in in-school populations tend to be substantially higher than those prevalence rates produced by any other method. But in-school studies seem to be the best way to get a broad section of the population. The prevalence of fetal alcohol syndrome, we feel, in the general population is between two and seven per thousand. And um, for all FASD, we feel the rates are substantially higher than previous estimates. We feel that FASD affects anywhere from two to seven percent of entire school populations. The clinic studies have been influenced mainly by uh, referral patterns. That is, only the children who have the most severe problems and the most classic features get referred to a tertiary level service, meaning a human uh, geneticist or a dysmorphologist, if they have manifest problems. By taking our specialists to the general population in schools, we are able to access the entire uh, population and access children who have varying degrees of severity, varying degrees of dysmorphology, varying degrees of behavioral and um, developmental problems. That way we're getting uh, a, a much higher uh, number of children to the specialists and therefore our rates indeed are higher. It's also the best way that we've found over the years to access a true cross-section of the characteristics of all children with FASD. We're reaching virtually all of the FAS kids this way. We're reaching most of the partial fetal alcohol syndrome children, and we're, we're now reaching and able to diagnose a much higher percentage of children with alcohol-related neurodevelopmental deficits. We see four cases of partial fetal alcohol syndrome to every one full-blown FAS. Uh, we're not sure yet as to the depth of the numbers of ARND, but we think that there are probably a large number of ARND cases um, compared to the FAS and PFAS. Our, our clinical team um, concentrates on first graders because at ages six through eight, a number of the behavioral and cognitive screens uh, are detailed enough to really get at the subtle differences, particularly in things like uh, executive functioning, short-term memory, and inattention. Those tests are really best done with children who are seven years of age and older. And we feel if we uh, are able to put them in situations where they receive uh, proper cognitive and behavioral stimulation, and possibly some other care such as nutrition therapy, that in fact their prognosis for a, uh, a successful life will be enhanced greatly. There are many children who qualify for the diagnosis of FAS and partial FAS who have very different looking features. That is because alcohol, uh, because FASD is produced by binge drinking, uh, many children are born with uh, only a partial complement of the facial features that people have recognized as classic FAS. 
the same thing with their behavioral deficits. That is that they may have some of the characteristics of a classic fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, but uh, only some. And uh, so, so I think one of the s strongest misconceptions is that uh, FAS children have to have one particular type of face and one very rigid set category of behaviors and um, cognitive traits. It, it is very clear to us that many children who qualify for the diagnosis have all kinds of different facial features and uh, a different, different look about them than what most people would expect usually only women over age 25, women who binge drink substantially, women who have low body mass, and other kinds of things are more likely to have a child with FASD. But as you r have the opportunity to research and review case after case, there is no guarantee that a woman will not have uh, an affected child, even in the first pregnancy at a very young age. So the best advice is if you are considering, if you're considering um, having a child, you should quit drinking three months before and maintain abstinence throughout the entire gestational period. That is the only guarantee that a child will not have FASD.